I am finally back on my own YouTube channel and as promised I'm here to tell you guys what it's like teaching as an introvert. So I've told you some tips about traveling as an introvert in another video that I did on here and um, a few of you had questions about well what about teaching as an introvert because a teacher you know usually teachers are very outgoing, they're very extroverted, they're standing in front of everyone running the whole thing you know honestly I never wanted to be a teacher I never thought that that was something that I would enjoy or even be good at really but first of all I want to say there is a difference between being shy and being introverted some people get those confused they think if you're introverted you're shy if you're shy you're introverted it doesn't really work that way they're different I was shy whenever I was younger. I guess I still am in some ways, but if I need to, if I need to pretend to be extroverted, I can be. Introverted is whenever you recharge by being by yourself. You need a long time, that's when you regain your energy back. Extroverts gain their energy by being around other people. Not to say that they want to be around people all the time, they also sometimes enjoy being by themselves, you know, gaining energy from being with people. There's different ways different types of people obviously not everyone is the same i am definitely introverted i like being alone and so after a day of teaching i would definitely need to go spend time alone i wasn't about to go out and get drinks with my coworkers. did not want to go hang out with people after work i wanted to go home put on my pjs watch some netflix and go to sleep so if you're thinking i want to teach i want to travel abroad and teach or even just teach at home but I'm an introvert, how can I do that? Specifically, if you're gonna be teaching in Korea, there are hagwons and then there are public schools. Hagwons are private academies. Usually you would teach with other foreign teachers and depending on the company, sometimes the students are very, very well advanced into their English and you could speak to them like you're speaking to like native English speakers. And I taught in a hagwon my last year in Korea and that's what it was like. The kids were very, very good at English. So it was very easy to connect with them. But on the flip side, because there were so many other foreign teachers at the school and we all lived in the same building, sometimes I just needed to take time for myself, like alone time to recharge because we worked long hours. We all shared a very small office and I would run into my coworkers all the time. So I set up these rules for myself so that I could recharge and I didn't get overwhelmed by the amount of social stimulation that I had all the time. And the first one was whenever I would go to school because I would ride the subway. If I ran into a coworker, <laughs> I would just be like, hey, I just am going to listen to music <laughs> right now. I don't want to talk to you. I would try to say it in the nicest way possible or just, you know, be like, you know, headphones in. Not right now. And so every morning when I would ride the subway to work, it was about a 20 minute like ride slash walk to work. I would just listen to music and not talk to anyone. Then on the way home, I would always walk with some of the coworkers and we would talk. That would be fine. I would just set that in the morning no talking for Peyton because <laughs> we would have lunch together and sometimes I would talk to people at lunch sometimes I would just have lunch by myself stick my headphones in again at my desk and most people they understand they also had work to do so sometimes people would just eat and do their work at the same time so it was really kind of you could choose whether to be social or not sometimes I would just needed that alone time at lunch to recharge I also like again like I said whenever I would go home Sometimes people would ask me to hang out. The most that I would do after work would be go to watch a movie. And you're not really socializing when you do that, are you? Because you don't talk to me during a movie. That's, I, yeah, if someone is trying to talk to me during a movie, I would never go to the theater with them again. But yeah, the most I would do after work is go to the movie theater and watch a movie with a friend. But like going to drink, going to a restaurant, uh, no. I need that time to myself after work. And again, Hogwarts, we were working such long hours. Sometimes I literally needed like a whole day on the weekend. I needed a whole day to myself just to not talk to anyone. And again, people are going to vary on what they need in those situations. So I think it's important to set those boundaries for yourself and to listen 
to your body whenever it's saying like, hey, you need a moment <laughs> of quiet to yourself. Whether again, that's just at lunch or a whole day on like a Sunday. That's Hagwon life. I also worked at a public school, which is a little different because I was the only foreign teacher there and the students weren't as advanced in their English ability. So it was harder to connect with the students, but it was easier to have that alone time because I was the only foreigner. And actually a lot of times I was just by myself, um, except for at lunch, I always, the other teachers would always eat with me at the, in the ca there was a cafeteria obviously. But actually sometimes in public school I felt too lonely. There wasn't really a balance of it. It was just like a lot of times I was just alone. But again, that would depend on what school you're at if you are working in a public school because Chen, for example, in the public school she worked at, all, there were a bunch of English teachers, even though they were Korean, they spoke English really well and they all had like an English office, so they sat together. Whereas I worked in a smaller school, there was the one Korean English teacher, she had a lot of other duties, so she was like, our office was in the English classroom and she was very busy, so she was rarely in there and it was just me sitting by myself in the English classroom when there were no students. Again, that would definitely vary of where you're teaching and the school environment and how big it is and all that kind of stuff. I will say about the whole teaching aspect of it, I was really nervous about it going into it, but once I started, like once I connected with the students after about the first week, it was fun. Like I enjoyed talking to the students and getting to know them. And then once I got to know them, I didn't feel uncomfortable being in front of them and you know, doing silly things or you know, having fun or even just like teaching them, you know, <laughs> boring teaching but yeah once I connected with them and uh, just put those fears to the side it was really fun and it definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone but I was really glad I did it because now I feel like if I could move to a foreign country and teach children in a country where I don't speak the language I feel like I can do anything if I really want to you know so I think if you're if you're on the fence about it because of the fact that maybe you've never taught before maybe you're shy maybe you're an introvert whatever it may be I think if you're on the fence I, just go for it so like I said before just listening to yourself I think like it's good to push past your comfort zone but at the same time you don't want to burn out if you have any more questions you can leave them in the comments below and in the meantime don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will see you guys next time bye